Okay, we're going to be taking a look at calculating the circumcenter of a triangle. The definition of circumcenter, what it is, it's the intersection of all three of your perpendicular bisectors. If you don't recall what a perpendicular bisector is, uh, I'll link a video in the top right hand corner. Please watch that video first if you need to know what a perpendicular bisector is. Um, but what I want to do now here is remind you that perpendicular bisector is measured by the line segment. So line segment AB has its own perpendicular bisector, at, as does AC, as the, does BC. If I intersect these three perpendicular bisectors, you have what's called the circumcenter. So um, the perpendicular bisector goes from the midpoint, the midpoint of AB out at 90 degrees. The perpendicular bisector of AC similarly will go from the midpoint of AC, and that also goes out at approximately 90 degrees. So we have a 90 degree angle here, 90 degree angle here. And lastly, your perpendicular bisector of BC goes from the midpoint out at 90 degrees. Again, much like uh, the intersection of your median lines, your perpendicular bisectors of a triangle all intersect at the same spot. And this same point is called the circumcenter. Okay, so your circumcenter is the intersection of all three of your perpendicular bisectors of your triangle. Again, we only really need to calculate the intersection of only two of them to go ahead and uh, find the circumcenter. Now, in this situation here, and this is important to know, is this is an acute triangle. When you have an acute triangle, the circumcenter is always located inside the triangle, right? So for, for acute triangles, circumcenter is always located inside the triangle. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at, instead of looking at an, at an acute triangle, I want to look at an obtuse triangle. So for this obtuse triangle here, let's label our vertices here, so A, B, C. If I go to calculate my circumcenter here, I have to calculate the... Per perpendicular bisector. So I have a perpendicular bisector going out this way. Uh, you'll notice 90 degrees, maybe right about here. Right, this is the midpoint. Likewise, I have a 90 degree angle going right about there. And this is my midpoint. And lastly, we have our 90 degree angle going from vertice BC. Going out is going to go out this way and we'll continue on, obviously also continues on in this direction as well. But at any rate, where all these cross, which is this point right here, this is my circumcenter. And you'll notice that the circumcenter for obtuse triangles will always be outside. Okay, so if you have an obtuse triangle, i.e. a triangle with an angle larger than 90 degrees, the circumcenter always lies on the outside, whereas if you have an acute triangle, i.e. all the internal angles are less than 90 degrees, that circumcenter is always lying on the inside of the triangle. Okay, so we want to know what exactly does the circumcenter give us? What's the purpose of it? Okay, so I have here an acute triangle drawn. Um, so obviously you can see the circumcenter is on the inside here, right? This is 90 degrees here. This is 90 degrees. These are my perpendicular bisectors. Okay, so what does a circumcenter give us? What's the purpose of it? So you can see here, I have an acute triangle. The uh, circumcenter is on the inside because of that. What the circumcenter gives you is it gives you a point that is equidistant, i.e. equal distance to the vertices of your triangle. So what I mean by that is this point here we have in red, my circumcenter has the property that its distance to A and its distance to B and its distance to C are all the same. So what the circumcenter gives you is it gives you a point that's equidistant, i.e. the same distance to all vertices of your triangle. And that's true whether you're talking about an acute triangle, like we have here, or whether you're talking about an obtuse triangle, like we had in the previous videos. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at calculating the circumcenter of a triangle. Uh, there's not a quick way like there was with uh, centroid, Right, the center we could just average out our x's and y's. You can't do that here. We have to actually go ahead and calculate those intersections of those perpendicular bisectors. So let's go ahead and plot this here. So P, point P is eh, maybe roughly here. We've got a rough sketch of P. 
uh, there's point Q approximately, and then we have point R is somewhere around here. Here's our point R. So if I connect these up, we have our triangle. Now we want to go ahead and calculate our perpendicular bisector. So I just need this as a sketch here. So I'd say <clears throat> perpendicular bisector, let's do one for PR. You do not um, need to intersect all three. We really just have to intersect two of them. Okay, so here's two of them. Now again, where these cross, this is our circumcenter. All right, so we want to find what is this circumcenter. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to calculate that. So I need to calculate my perpendicular bisectors. Let's calculate the perpendicular bisector of PR. All right, so how would we calculate the perpendicular bisector of line segment PR? Well, to do that, I need to find, I know that my perpendicular bisector meets the line PR at 90 degrees. So first, I have to calculate the slope of PR. Well, the slope of, of the line segment PR is going to be, let's label this X1, Y1, label this X2, Y2. You're going to get here Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. In which case here, I get negative 12 over 4 is minus 3. Now, that's not the slope that I want. The slope that I want is perpendicular to it. So therefore, the slope of, I guess the perpendicular slope of PR is going to equal 1 over 3. Right? So that's an important fact there. The perpendicular slope is going to equal 1 over 3 here. Okay, so now I know the slope of my perpendicular bisector is a third. I also need a point, right? Because if I can find a point, then I can go ahead, I have a slope and a point, and I can find the equation of, of this line here. So our goal is to find the equation of this line, right? Well, I, I've just found the slope, right? The slope of this line is a third. Well, if I can find this point, I can use that to uh, sub that in. I have a point slope, and I can solve. So the, this point here is just the midpoint. So if I average out my x's here, x1 and x2, that'll be negative 12 plus negative 8 over 2, and then 6 plus negative 6 over 2, in which case here I end up getting um, negative 10 and 0. So now not only do I have a slope of the line, I have the point, so I can put this together. So therefore, the equation is y equals one third x plus my y-intercept. I can sub my point in to the equation, and you can go ahead and solve here. So you end up getting the y-intercept is 10 over 3. So the equation of my perpendicular bisector for line segment PR is going to be y equals one third x plus 10 over 3. Now let's go ahead and calculate the perpendicular bisector of QR. So to find the perpendicular bisector of QR, I first have to find the slope of QR. Well, the slope of QR is going to equal what? I'll get rid of this here. I'm going to label this as x1, y1. So if I go to calculate the slope of QR, it's going to be negative 6 minus 0 over negative 8 minus 4 is negative 6 over negative 12 is a half. So therefore, the perpendicular slope of QR, which is what I want, is going to be negative 2. So now I know the perpendicular slope of this line is negative 2. So now I want to go ahead and find, to find the equation of this line here, I now know the slope is negative 2. I just got to find the point. Well, again, I got to find this point, because I can use this. This is the average of my x's and y's between Q and R. So if I add up my X's here, we get 4 plus negative 8 divided by 2. And I add up my Y's divided by 2. Uh, we end up getting here uh, negative 2 and negative 3 for the point. So now I have a slope and I have a point. So therefore, the equation of this line is going to be Y equals minus 2X plus my B value. Sub my point in. And I can go ahead and solve for B here. So I get B equals negative 7. <clears throat> so putting all this information together here, I now know the equation of the perpendicular bisector of QR. 
What's the equation of the perpendicular bisector of QR? It's going to be y equals minus 2x minus 7. So now I have the equation of my perpendicular bisector of PR and the equation of the perpendicular bisector of QR. What I want to do now is find the point of intersection of both these systems, right? So putting this together here, equation 1 is y equals 1 third x plus 10 over 3, and equation 2 is y equals negative 2x minus 7. So what's the point of intersection of this system? Well, set them equal. Right? It's essentially doing substitution. Multiply across by 3. Add 6x to both sides. Okay, so solving for x here, we get uh, negative 31 over 7, which is approximately negative 4.43. That's my x value. If I want to find my y value, uh, therefore y equals negative x times negative 4.43 minus 7. Uh, y is going to equal 1.86 approximately. So putting this all together here, the circumcenter of this triangle is negative 4.43 approximately 1.86. Um, and again, if you took this point and calculated it using the distance equation and calculate the distance from that, this, this point here to R, to P, and to Q, you would get approximately the same value. They are actually supposed to be exactly equal, but obviously as this is an approximated value, um, we have an approximated answer. But these, these will be equidistant to the vertices of your triangle. Okay, so that concludes calculating the circumcenter of a triangle. You can see it's a pretty lengthy uh, calculation. Um, there's a lot of steps to it. So, um, you know, study, the, study through it, go through it slowly, take a look at the steps I've taken, and you'll understand it um, soon enough. Thank you.